Hi everybody and welcome back to Cheetash. My name is Chris and we're continuing along with the four agreements. The last agreement, the fourth agreement, always do your best. Always do your best. It's so simple. It's so simple and as long as you do your best, all the other agreements fall in line. That's what we're we're going to be talking about here today. Uh, but what did we talk about last time? Well, we talked about the third agreement, which was never make assumptions. Don't don't make assumptions. And we talked about how we create our own dramas in our mind. We drum up our own conflicts just from making assumptions, right? This, the in, in the second bullet point there that you see you should have known thinking like you drum up these conflicts because the other person in this scenario should have known something. So then you get upset because, well, they should have known. You assume that they know and you create conflicts out of this, not only internal conflicts, but conflicts between other people. And it really only stems from just not communicating or not asking questions right if if you just ask questions and we're clear about your intentions and expectations remember we talked about that a lot last time expectations you, you wouldn't you wouldn't assume anything you would get the right answer or you would get the right expectations you're clear on what you're expecting out of the situation when people make assumptions, they need to justify everything and they replace the need to communicate or ask questions. So that was don't make assumptions. That was the third agreement. And today we're talking about the last agreement, which is always do your best. And as the author states here early on in the chapter, the last agreement allows the others to become ingrained. And I, we're going to kind of talk about how this happens, but all this means is, it, this means exactly what it says it means. Nothing more, nothing less. And now this is interesting because you, you would probably think, no, you if, if you give it your best, you should go more than your best. Right. But I remember reading another book, uh, 48 Laws of Power, which, shoot, maybe I should do a video on those 48 Laws of Power, too. I, I've seen other people, other YouTube channels have done similar videos going through the, the Laws of Power. One of the Laws of Power is in victory, you have to, it's something about like, and I have it here, I should almost pull it out. In victory, you have to learn when to stop. So, yes. It, 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 you win, but you win gracefully. And maybe that's two separate things, but you have to know when to stop in victory because then it gets to a point where it's not fun anymore and now you're over trying and you end up decreasing your mor morale and you end up now having to outdo yourself and it becomes more difficult, and you, it almost ends up being more frustrating that way. Obviously, you don't want to give nothing less than your best, but you got to be careful when you give more than your best, because oftentimes you over-try. Remember from uh, with winning in mind, over-trying, that's a huge problem with athletes. They over-try, they over-practice. There's a balance to everything. There's a balance to the universe here. So I kind of like that the author... Uh, talked about this. Um, the other thing is your best can change from moment to moment. Your best is going to be different depending on how you feel that particular day. It's going to be different from day to day. It's kind of like how we talked about in, uh, I think, what was it, the second agreement? Yeah, it was the second agreement. Don't take anything personally about how people's communication follows their emotions. So if they feel really good, they're going to communicate in a very positive way. They're going to give you 
uh, nice compliments. If they're having a shitty day, well, they're not going to give you such such nice compliments. You can't take it personally, right? And it's the same thing with feeling your best. If you feel great that day, your best is going to be at like a level 10. But if you're feeling shitty, your best is maybe going to be a level 5. I This happened to me with sprinting, uh, a sprinting workout I was doing. And I remember one week had a great sprinting workout. Just this past week, not as good. I was I was a little slow. Didn't feel that great, but I still gave him my best. Even though the times that I was getting were slower, I felt slower, did not feel as good, but I still gave him my best. And you can't get frustrated with that. It's going to change from day to day. But as long as you give it your best, there... That's all you can ask for. And the, the, here's the fourth bullet point here. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier. If you try to do more than your best, like we were just talking about, you spend more energy. Your best becomes not enough, and that's not a healthy thing. Your best should be your best. You know that. Now, all of a sudden, if it's if you're trying to do more, you're second guessing yourself. If you truly know yourself, you know what your best is. And then obviously if you give less than your best, well, you just get frustrated with yourself because you know you could have given more. Right? That wasn't your best. You're going to you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get frustrated either way, basically is what the author kind of says here. Let's go to the next slide. Ah, okay. So this was the, the there was a little uh, anecdotal story here about the man uh, who went to the Buddhist temple, and let me see if I can get to that. This was on page seventy-seven, and he asked the master, "If I meditate four hours a day, how long will it take me to transcend?" The master says, "If you meditate four hours a day, perhaps you'll transcend in ten years." And then. The guy asks him, okay, well, he puts two and two together. So that's four hours in a day, transcend in 10 years. If I do eight hours a day, it'll only take me half the time. But the master actually looks at him and says, okay, if you meditate eight hours a day, you'll transcend in 20 years. And he's kind of confused. Why will it take me longer if I meditate longer? And the master replies, you are not here to sacrifice your joy or life. You are here to live, to be happy, and to love. If you can do your best in two hours of meditation, but you spend eight hours instead, you will only grow tired, miss the point, and you won't enjoy life. You're going to learn no matter how long you meditate here. And this is a great point. You're not here to sacrifice your life. There is a... There is a place for meditation. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it, it, it should not replace your life. I don't know if meditation is going to make you happier. I think it's going to calm you down. It's going to make you more focused and bring you to balance. But I don't know if it can really bring you joy. That you have to go out in the world and you have to take some action. Like the author says here, doing your best is taking action because you love it. And here's the thing. Speaking of action, let's go down this road. It's not that you're expecting a reward from it. The rewards will come, but you're not expecting the reward. God, what were we talking about <sighs> It's almost kind of like, gosh, what was, you know what? This was from Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning. You shouldn't try to be happy. Happiness should just be the result of something, the result of suffering through something. That's the end game, right? You shouldn't, nobody's expecting you to be just Who's expecting to be happy 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? That comes at the end of struggling through something, and that's kind of what Don Miguel Ruiz is talking about here. Doing your best is taking the action because you want to do it, not because you're doing it for the money. That shouldn't be your main driver. 
the rewards will come. You're just doing something because you love it. That's kind of where I'm, I'm at with uh, this this coding project group that I'm a part of. It's you know there, there's no reward to it yet. It's not like I'm getting paid to do it. This is just like an extracurricular thing. Now, maybe it might lead to something, but I'm doing it to to learn to be a part of a group. Is it frustrating sometimes? For sure, like when things don't work and trying to code outside of my regular job, yeah, it, it sucks sometimes. But deep down, I know I'm doing the, the right th- thing. Deep down, I'm glad I'm doing it. And we'll see if a reward comes. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go to the next slide here. When someone tries to judge they try to punish you based on your effort but if you do your best there's no regrets who's going to punish you you did your best that's all you can do you don't punish yourself for doing your best right and this is where you have to kind of be careful with doing less than your best or more than your best because you're going to judge yourself in both of those situations you're going to tr- try to punish yourself for, ah, oh, I should have given more. Or you're going to punish yourself for, oh, I should have. I know I could have gotten more. I know I could have gotten more, but just give your best. Give your best. And that way you don't give your judge the opportunity to lay down a punishment on you. All right. You have now there's going to be some days where maybe you don't give your best, and that's just where this awareness comes in and learning from your mistakes, looking honestly at the results, and then just keep on practicing. Keep on practicing. The, the biggest thing is not to hold yourself to such like a high I mean, you want to do that, but you have to. Give yourself the opportunity to make mistakes so you can learn from them. That's the only way you're going to learn and get better. And nobody's perfect here. You have to allow yourself to to learn. And how you're going to do that? Hey, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to break the agreements. But keep keep on keeping on. Keep on trying. We're going to talk about that in one of these slides coming up. And when you do your best, it doesn't feel like work. You're not out here trying to please other people. You're not doing your best for other. You're doing your best for you so that you can go home at the end of the day and say, hey, yeah, I might have lost that match, but they just had a better day. I did everything I could. Right? You're, you're not beholden to other people here on how uh, your performance is not... You're not doing that performance for other people. You're doing it for yourself. Don't try to please other people. Let's go to the next slide. If you take action because you have to, there is no way you'll do your best. Right? You end up getting frustrated when you have to do something. It's better to just not even do it. You should enjoy the action because you're expressing what you are. You know yourself so much that you know you love your your job or you know that, you know, you love taking the dogs out for a walk, watching over your neighbor's flowers. You would really like doing that. You do it because you really love it. That's who you are. Not because you have to. Right? All of a sudden, you really, all all of a sudden, maybe it takes money, like a monetary exchange, to go over to your neighbor's house and water their flowers. And then, are you going to do your best at that? Yeah, maybe. See, I don't know. and, And maybe you will. Maybe that money is the motivation. Right? But maybe... If it's money, plus you want to just go over there and do it, you might do a a much better job, might not miss those flowers. This is kind of a weird example, but 
you know what I mean? I mean, money is only such a limited motivator. You still have to want to do it. Think about all these athletes that sign these enormous contracts. How many of these athletes, most of them, they sign a huge contract and then they coast because they're locked into 10 years, 100 million. I mean, that's life-changing money right there. But the special athletes sign a big contract and they still stay motivated. They still perform. That's special. That's special. Anybody can have ideas. But what makes the difference is action. Gotta take action. I mean, we've talked about this in other books. Alchemist. We can draw this this kind of uh, key key point from that book from from with winning in mind. You gotta take action. And the author here talks about this uh, puja ritual. Let me see if I can find it. This is where in India they perform a ritual called puja. In this ritual, they take idols that represent God in many different forms and bathe them, feed them, and give them their their love to them. They even chant mantras, mantras to these idols. The idol itself is not important. What is important is the way they perform the ritual, the way they say, I love you, God. It's a communion between you and God. And I think that's what doing your best is doing. Because in effect, the author here is kind of saying that your body, mind, spirit is a manifestation of God. And by doing your best, you're honoring it. You're honoring the peak potential that you have to offer. And you are utilizing, out, utilizing it out in the world and you're not letting that go to waste. That's kind of, that's like my kind of take of what this puja ritual is. It, it's a communion be, between you and God, and you want your body, mind, and spirit are God. Let's go to the next slide. This might be the last slide here. The first three agreements only work if you do your best. It all stems from doing your best. And I know the author, I think, said earlier in the chapters, really the first word being impeccable with your word is like the most important one. And then everything else, I think he was talking about that, the first agreement. But it kind of makes sense here. If you do your best, the other three agreements fall in line. Because over time, you transform. If you're doing your best, you're not going to feel the need to punish yourself. Even if you break any of those agreements, if you do your best, then those agreements will fall in line. You're not going to take things personally. You're not going to make assumptions. You're going to be impeccable with your word when you do your best. Right? If you break an agreement, just try it again. Don't punish yourself. Don't let yourself become a victim to the judge. And I re I'm reminded of uh, some. Somebody, I think it was Dr. Weil on an episode of Joe Rogan, was saying something about quitting smoking that was pretty profound. And he was saying the best way to quit smoking is just keep trying to quit because you're going to fail. Most people fail. But if you just keep trying and just that act of like quitting and then getting back on it, and then quitting, and then getting back on it. Over time, you go longer periods of not smoking until just one day it just, that's it. You don't need to smoke anymore. It's all about transcending the human experience by keeping your agreements, and that starts with just doing your best. And the author states here, don't be concerned about the future. Keep your attention on today. Do your best today. Focus on today. And at the end of the day, look at the results, reevaluate, don't punish yourself, and just come back out tomorrow swinging. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. I, tell, I have to tell myself all, that all the time. Now, I will say, I do think about the future a lot. 
I think it you do have to have some foresight and planning. Think about like in chess. Guys are thinking about moves. I'm, haven't you heard this before? Like they, they think like five, three, four, five moves ahead, right? And I think that's important, but you don't lose sight of the current move. And then don't dwell on the past. Always do your best. I think this was the last slide. Let me check. Yes, sir, it was. There we go. So you guys aren't staring at a black screen there. Um, thank you guys so much for sticking around here till the end. That was the fourth agreement. Always do your best. Uh, we don't have much more of this book to go. We uh, only got two more chapters left because I don't think we're going to go over. The last chapter is a prayer uh, sequence of prayers. I don't think we'll go over that. Um, we just have the next chapter is called Breaking Old Agreements. So we have that one, and then we have a new heaven. What is it called? A creating heaven on earth. Creating heaven on earth. So not much more. Um, thank you guys so much for making it. If you made it this far, listening this far, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, want to start a conversation, feedback, please leave them down in the comments of the video. Please like and subscribe to the video. Just crossed over 20. We're at 21 subscribers uh, as of the date of this video, or me recording this video, I should say. So thank you very much to everybody out there. And I got to start thinking about the next book that we do after this. Huh. So we don't got much more to go, but thank you guys again so much. We'll be back next week. My name is Chris. This has been Cheetash. Take care.